Okay, so this is Greg. We're doing part two of our team building training. We're going to videotape this, this section, and uh, it's going to be incredible information that you need to use in your business. You need to use, and everyone down there at the Team BYU, we love you guys. Here we go. So now today we're going to go to the top of the pyramid, and we're going to talk about what that is, and it's the inattention to results. And if you remember last week, we talked about the, the purpose of us is to achieve results, right? So we want to achieve results. And so when we talk about the inattention to results, you're like, okay, what is that? And it has to do with status and ego. We're going to kind of get into that. But I kind of want to recap that um, great teams got to work together as a team. We all have to work together as a collective goal. And it's, and it's leadership's job to articulate the mission and the vision and what we want to accomplish as a team. And then going back to the trust being the foundation that if we don't trust people that we can't get there, we have to feel comfortable that we can confront one another, we can confront management, we can confront board members, whoever that is, to express your opinion with the idea that we want you to express your opinion, we want to hear what's going on without any fear of reprimand or any fear of you know, getting fired or getting demoted or whatever that is. It's really not about that. And at the end of the day, you have the, the, the platform to speak your, your voice and to let it be heard, but then also recognizing that uh, the executive management is going to make those decisions and then you're going to buy into those, you're going to support those, regardless if they didn't go the way you wanted to go. So that's like a little recap from last week. Um, and the idea that we can admit our, our mistakes, we can admit our weaknesses, and we can really communicate with that. And I mean, even little things, it's like I told Emily yesterday, you know, Monday I was like in a really weird funk and I really felt irritated. And I don't know if I came across like I was irritated, but I apologize, I'm like, you know, if I She's like, I just stayed away from you because I could tell, you know. <laughs> so, you know, we're in a small office. We're all together. But it's all about, you know, being open and being real about that because we're all real people. We're going to have our good days. We're going to have our bad days. And, and uh, I'm, I'm doing really good today, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so, so good attention results kind of boils down to status and ego. So the whole idea of an ego, guys like me who have egos and we live off egos, there's, there's definitely a place, I think, for egos within an organization, a team. But when it comes to uh, uh, working for results as an individual and trying to, wanting to be recognized as an individual for results, at the expense of the overall goals is where it breaks down. And I don't know if that made sense. Let me say it a different way. So uh, when somebody seeks individual attention or individual recognition at the expense of the overall results, team breaks down. Now sometimes there is need for individual recognition because people are doing their jobs exceptionally well and you always want to individually recognize people and I know Ed has talked about this in the past. It's been one of my weaknesses and so I even talked to uh, maybe you guys about it too but I know I've talked to Emily about it but I want to do a better job of individually recognizing you and because and, I do care about you guys. I do care about the job you do. I do care that you guys take ownership of what you're doing and I do want to recognize you for that. It's not, and I wanted to kind of give an analogy of like a football team, a basketball team, a baseball, any sports, right? You look at these guys that are out there, they're on the field and they're working towards their individual goals. And how many times have you seen a sports game or a team where the guy, the quarterback had you know, 14 touchdown passes and 700 yards and do this and that, but they still lost the game? Right? Or you hear maybe a story about a guy who did really good and then he, he lost the game and he's in the locker room. He didn't care because he, he, he did good. And it's like that individual results. It's really it's a coach's job to get the best team possible because teams win sports. You, you know, Michael Jordan never won a national championship. It was the Chicago Bulls, right? It was the team. It was, it's, it's all about the team. And so that our job as the management is to create a cohesive team that trusts each other, that's working towards the same goals and getting sort of same things. And we don't want team members that continually strive on a daily basis for those individual results. And so part of that is uh, just addressing the issue and talking about it. Of course, we don't have that here, obviously. Uh, but it could come into the, to play, and so it's something that you just want to be aware of as you're doing this. And this, this all, I'm going to get this, is all going to come together at the end. So um, you think about that analogy of uh, teams and the stats and the players, and they keep their stats. And what's interesting about this, and I talked to uh, Emily a lot about this because of, of our 15 trips to LA in the last three weeks, uh, is as you learn more and you become more confident in a skill, you're worth more, right? So like in sports, how do they measure what you're worth statistically, right? And statistically, the Michael Jordans of the world, they may be statistically, or, or even like a Tiger Woods, you know, like Tiger Woods statistically, I think is only like 
10 to 15 percent better than everybody else and in some cases even less than that but financially he makes 50 times more than the, the average person on the golf tour so that's something else that I want to keep in mind because I think part of the problem with team is that when you have people at different levels of skill sets and different levels of compensation it's easy to feel anxiety ridden or some some feeling that why are they getting paid so much and that why they're this and they're more important than me it's like no no, no I want to try to make it so everyone position is important everything you do is important everything you achieve is important as a goal and when we're all on that same page and we're all supporting each other in our goals then that's where the team really strengthens and then we can share in the overall end results together so going back to the team analogy how do you measure results what are those results and so instead of getting individual results what are our team results now of course in a football game or a baseball game or any sporting, what's the, what is the end result that you're looking for? Score. A win. A win, right? You're looking for a win, which is determined by the score, right? So if that's how you determine it, you know the score at the end of the game, but how would you measure yourself after the first quarter? How would you measure yourself at halftime? How would you measure yourself? And of course, of course, these pros, right? They have 15 different coaches. They're at halftime, and they're analyzing the films, analyzing this, and they're talking about, we got to adjust here, we got to adjust there, we got to do it. They're making all these adjustments to get to the end of the game. Now, in a game, you're talking three hours. But in a business, how do we measure our results? Where do we measure our results? Revenues. You got revenues, profit. So at the end of the day, and we're, what is the end of the day for us? What is the end of our game? There really isn't one. Right? We're gonna this we want this business to, to keep to continue to go and to continue to bless people and kids and families <laughs> for a long, long, long time. So what is the end of the game for us? What is the score? How do we how do we collectively as a team measure our results so we can have a score? And and see the other thing too is is as a leader and leadership, it's like not only do we have to figure out how we measure our results, but we don't want to leave any room for interpretation. Right? So it's like if we're not really clear on the expectation of the end result of, of the, you know, what we talked about last week, you know, we're in this business to create results. What is that result? And if we're not clear, if there's any room for interpretation on that, we cannot properly achieve and measure what we want to do effectively, right? So we want to create these results. So basically what I want to do now is I want to talk about what are some of the ways that we, for our business, can measure our results. So again, everyone, we're going to go ahead and pause the video right now because if you're listening to this as part of our training program, you get with your team and ask them, how can you measure the results for your business? Okay, so we spent some time going over some of the categories of results of how we would measure results for our business. And we came up from everything from prospects to opt-ins to customers, referrals our customer experience and again how do you measure customer experience but I can promise you one thing if we can increase the customer experience to a point that people would say I would love to tell somebody else about this that's where the viral starts to take off this is huge in any business I have a whole other training on customer experience uh, email usage for us how often are the kids using the email number of kids bidding on auction items number of new kids bidding uh, monthly gameplay. What games are they playing? Which what are the most popular games? So we because we find out what the popular games are. We put those games in front of the new kids and they start playing, get them engaged. Uh, from the investor standpoint, how many investor presentations are we giving? How many packages are we sending out? How many investors are we getting? Uh, then some generic traffic, open rates, conversion, publicity. So basically, we've got this whole list. So now what we're going to do is, as a team, we're going to we're going to go off on our own little way. And next week when we get back together for our team meeting. I want to have everybody have their own notes on what they think is the top three or four things that you think, if you're a department head, that need to be measured for you, that could give you the best way to, uh, to really, to, to, what we want to do is we want to see growth, we want to see that what we're doing is working, and if, and, if, and if it's not working, we want to be able to go, go why isn't it working? Why are we getting more kids bidding? Why are we, you know, why are we getting more email issues? Why are we getting more packages out? Why are, why? So it's all about analyzing that data. So we'll come back next week and then we'll throw that back and forth about what we're going to do and then we'll make a master list. We'll talk about exactly how, who's going to report what, how we're going to report it. And again, considering we're very limited in our resources, we can't do everything. There's no way we could possibly monitor and, and do all this because again, it becomes very laborious. But if we split up the responsibilities, go, okay, you're in charge of getting this information, you're in charge of getting this, you're in charge of getting this, and what's the most important stuff? And let's look at that as a metrics, right? That's the end of today's training. Do what I do. Wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude and tell somebody you love them.